Um, we made an initial assessment to check its general health, watched its movement for a couple of minutes, um, noted its breathing, everything seemed completely normal. So I'm happy to vaccinate this animal. So that's what we're going to do now. As you can see, it's very easy, very quick. Animal doesn't really react to the injection at all. Again, after the injection, we'll just observe the animal for a couple of minutes to make sure there's no adverse reaction to it. And if there isn't, we'll carry on, we'll fur clip it, spray it, so that if it's recaught in the next couple of days, we'll be able to identify it as an animal that's already been uh, vaccinated. Okay, got one of this year's cubs here. Looks to be in very good condition. Slight abrasions on the snout, just where it's uh, been rubbing up against the bars. But generally it looks in good condition. Um, no obvious problems and it looks fit enough to be vaccinated. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Pass me the wicket,
quite spicy little one. Again, we'll just watch it for a couple of minutes after it's been injected, just to check it doesn't have a reaction to the injection, which it doesn't seem to have. Job done. So, I'm with Dr. Lizzie Wilberforce. Lizzie, I actually get to see our faces for once, which yeah. is uh, not usually the method that we approach. Um, and we're in Castlewood Nature Reserve in Carmarthenshire, aren't we, Lizzie? And we've been out very early this morning. Um, yep. Very early very this morning. Very early this morning, yep. Yeah. Uh, and we're sat by a very active badger set. Um, and just tell us briefly a little bit about what, what we've been doing this morning then. Right, well, yeah, this is, this is one of quite a few big sets that we've got within the nature reserve here. Um, the woodland, we manage the woodland, um, mm. and it's on, on a, quite a kind of steep slope, a lot of it. But it's surrounded by amazing pasture land, so it's a it's good area for, mm. for badger foraging, and uh, the sets are, a lot of the sets are in the woodland. So what we've been doing this morning is we've been out very early with, with uh, Andrew, our contractor from Ecocon, vaccinating these badgers against bovine TB. OK, brilliant. I mean, yes, these, as you say, these areas are... A lot of pasture land in this valley, all the way up, actually, isn't it? So, and they used to be called Mysa Aur, I think, in the Welsh, um, fields of gold. So they were very good um, dairy land, and it's still mm. a lot of dairy and beef cattle in the area, aren't there? So it's really important that we're vaccinating our badgers to kind of reduce the amount of potential interaction. Uh, well, sorry, to reduce the amount of sort of potential um, issues with bovine TB. So, yep. by vaccinating these badgers. How much do we think that's going to have an impact on the sort of immediate area? Um, well, that is the million dollar question mm. because um, what, what, although there's good evidence for the effectiveness of the vaccine in, in reducing the disease burden in the badger population, what we haven't had yet is a, a field scale trial that, that shows the knock on impact of that mm. in terms of the disease in the cattle. Um, but it's quite reasonable to assume that if, if the, the vaccine is effective in reducing the kind of prevalence of the disease in badgers, that 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 is, is surely got to help. Mm. And I think it's, it's important for us. I mean, we as a as a movement, the Wildlife Trust have been very anti culling uh, of badgers. We don't believe it's effective um, as a disease control mechanism. So this is our attempt to do our bit to what what we believe is the best solution available mm. at the moment. So if we can, um, what, what we've done today is we've, we've been very fortunate that in the first phase of this vaccination we've caught a lot of cubs, mm. uh, which are, are the ones that we, they're the animals we really want to catch. They're not likely to have been exposed to infection yet. So if we can increase their immunity, um, then if, you know, hopefully we can yeah, uh, cut down. We, we know TBs in this area. We've had cattle herds in the immediate area that have had TB breakdown. So mm. we're hoping we can do our bit to, to help eradicate that. Yeah, and I think that's the important thing, isn't it? You know, we could vaccinate or adults with TB and obviously the vaccination wouldn't have any effect then would it but if we get the cubs before they're exposed yes that's right and we're committed to a five-year program so uh, that, that the intention of that is that over, over a time frame of five years you will see a turnover of badgers uh, in the in the wild population and so if we can catch all the young animals as they come through in that five-year period then mm. hopefully we'll, we'll get a sort of set level immunity yeah and I mean what we videoed this morning is Andrew from Ecocon and he's been doing um, sort of vaccination he's got about 10 young ones in the last couple of days is that right yeah so we've just we've done the first sort of phase within the woods so we're doing the entire nature reserve in, in two sessions mm. um, so yeah that's the, the kind of western section um, yeah. of, of the badger population that we've done so far so yeah so far it's, it's been really promising and um, we, we were lucky we had a lot of volunteers help last year with a set survey which is 
is good. We we yeah. we spent quite it's quite a lot of days. It's a steep reserve, mm. <laughs> so there's a big group yeah. of us kind of yeah sort of sweeping through the woods, mapping all the all the badger sets and all the badger set entrances and the outliers and everything. That's that's really informed what we're doing today. And I mean that's quite interesting, isn't it? Because we we you know so they are massive the sets, aren't they? And they are quite extensive. And they, they are absolutely. But I mean you know we're in a bit of the woods today that that we wouldn't normally have reason to come mm. to. And although when we did the sweep through, I mean I've been already been managing the site for sort of five years when we did the set survey and on although some of the big sets obviously I was well aware of we did find some that I completely oblivious to the mm. fact that they were there I mean there may be outliers from some of the main sets but nonetheless it's you know it's, it's 25 hectares of woodland and very steep and they're, they're quite adept at hiding mm. themselves away yeah. yeah so I mean over the next five years we'll continue the vaccination each year in summertime when the cubs are newly out of the sets uh, yes, that's right. So there's guidelines about the appropriate time of year, um, yeah. so that yeah, so that you're not sort of doing the actual breeding period. We won't be active. So hopefully, it'll be, yeah, this time summer next year we'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. And so the process is we'll trap, we'll vaccinate and release. And yeah. I mean, there is a small level of stress with the animal, isn't there? But it's a very short period they're in. The trap. It's a very short period, yes. And the, the licensing terms are very strict. You know, we we we're done. It's it's not even seven o'clock in the morning yet and we're all done so they're all out at the cages mm. and, and, and been processed by then yeah. um, and um, the, the traps are set late in the evening as well so they're, they're in, in the, the cages for the minimum period and you can't um, we, we've only trapped in this area for two consecutive nights now so we know that no animal's going to be spending mm -hmm. a disproportionate amount of time in, in those cages so it's, it's all very tightly regulated and uh, Andrew's licensed is, is got lots of licenses and and training that you've yeah. got to do which is why we've brought a contractor in um, because yes. because we don't have the capacity or the skills to do that and it's very yeah it's, there's a tight legal controls on this and on the reporting so yeah. Yeah, and he's clearly very experienced and knows an awful lot about the behaviour of the badgers and what sort of they are doing and why they are reacting in a certain way. As yeah, well. absolutely. I'm very fortunate with Andrew. He's, he's been involved in a lot of this work going back well before the, the sort of vaccination was being um, deployed in the field. So mm. um, yeah, very confident that we're, we're doing a really good job here, which is great. Yeah, and I mean we've been doing the same in the in intensive action area, haven't we, in Pembrokeshire. Yeah, so that's Welsh Government leading that. I mean, we're, we're outside the intensive action area here, which is which is great. I mean, I'm hoping that what we're doing here will encourage other people to look at what we're doing and see that it's quite it's quite feasible. It doesn't need to be um, mm. expensive necessarily, especially when you look at it in terms of per head of cattle protected rather than per badger, yeah. which is the way you would ordinarily look at vaccination costings. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but we've we've got this. Uh, this is being led by us with funding from Welsh Government and also from People's Postcode Lottery in our own appeal yeah. actually so our members have supported this which is yeah. brilliant um, but some of our badges in the intensive action area are being vaccinated directly by Welsh Government as part of their programme. Yeah. Okay and I mean other people landowners can apply for the Welsh Government funding can't they there, there is a, a yeah, yes this, this yes it was an it was an open um, I mean there are some terms on on the organised uh, ter there are some terms on the grant in terms of who can apply uh, because you've got to have an agricultural beneficiary and there's, there's various rules but it mm. is an open grant um, I don't think they've confirmed whether they're opening it again yet this year but I'm okay. sure they're hoping to so yeah. so worth keeping yeah. an eye on that oh, if definitely. you are in a, in yeah. sort of that sort of situation yeah okay. brilliant thank you very much